We are finally here. The Siege of Aragion has begun. This is the one the whole season has been building towards. This is their Helm's Deep, their Battle of the Blackwater. I also kept reading how much some people are enjoying this series. Okay, I want to see what they see. I'm just going to sit back, not think too much, and just enjoy some action. And here we go. Celebrimbor has the right idea. Let's sip some coffee and just enjoy the day. No bitches. He goes back to using the mithril powder Sauron produced last episode, but he noticed some things were off. Sauron walks out to chaos as Adar's army continues to bombard the city. I'm loving these chaos transitions too. Sauron takes over the defense of the city. He took over the bureaucracy last week. I mean, isn't there some kind of rank or something any of this shit? I'm not going to worry about it though. Simple mistake. I'm going to chalk it up to just Sauron's influence. I'm here to enjoy it. Not alone. No, 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 no. You can't blow me right now. I have work to do. I don't know what that impression was, but damn it, man. She is ride or die. Love is in the air, baby. But then the siege engines go silent as the orcs target the mountain. Ah, uh, you mother. What is that? That's stupid. Why do you do this to me? I can't just sit here and enjoy some action. Was this their plan all along? But for one thing, that catapult doesn't look like it could send a rock a couple hundred yards. And they able to fling that damn thing a, a mile into the air? I get it, man. I'm supposed to not think about it. Just, just have them damn the damn river beforehand. <laughs> like, you don't have to sodomize physics for this astronomically stupid batshit plan to work. At least build a bridge downstream and then attack with some ladders like they did at Helm's Deep. Also, there's only a handful of elves on the damn wall. Why not just attack the main gate instead of going through a damn wall? The possibilities are endless. But you picked the absolute dumbest choice possible. Oh my god. Well, there the ground salt begins as the orcs cross the instantly dried river. That should be sludge, but it must be their lucky day, baby. And speaking of day, look at all that smoke high as the sun. How fortunate. Oh, and at the same time, Celebrimbor finds the glitch in the Matrix. And they do this by recreating the glitch in the Matrix. With a mouse this time, though. And this whole reveal is so damn sloppy. He clumsily throws the damn hammer through the window. How the hell does this work? Shouldn't he hear shit already? There are cracks in this building. Oh well, oh well, oh well. We'll keep moving. Celebrimbor then sees the truth. The mithril powder is blood cut from Sauron's hand last episode. And we get the notably hilarious moment from the trailer of Celebrimbor breaking down at the side of the forge. Then Sauron lets him wander outside instead of subduing him right there. Like, you realize you need this guy, right? You realize he's walking into a war zone, right? You can deceive even yourself. Is it deception or just retardation? Well, another mystery, baby. Celebrimbor then goes to Merdania, who's still hard at work narrating the battle. Just sightseeing like nothing's happening. He tries to plead with her. No. He has been protecting us. It's too late, homie. She's in heat. Sauron's got her whip. Celebrimbor wants Sauron seized. These guards, man, them hoes are dangerous to your health. They all, <laughs> they all look at him like he's lost his marvels. Sauron's hand, then he shows uh, it's red blood. You're fucked. Mirdania tries to help him back inside. Hands off me! <laughs> no! <laughs> God damn! <laughs> it must not have been that good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess being immortal, that thing's wrecked. Like, probably look like a pack of ham the dogs have been at. I'll give them props for not holding back, though, but my empathy for this character can only go so far. The horns blow, and Elrond finally teleported his ass here. He just got back from playing a quick cameo in that sitcom they got taking place at Khazad Doom. He finally rekindled his bromance, but the dwarves are still dealing with kings gone wild. Luckily, everyone finally realizes the king has gone mad and joined during Indesa's strike. Unfortunately, though, the king is against unionizing, and he terminates their employment. This will start the divide between dwarves and elves. Elrond arrives to the battlefield with Durin's assurance. They attempt to charge, but stop on a dime once they see Galadriel. Damn it, she always messes everything up. He's in a cage. Then they treat with Adar. And here, of course, is where we come to the kiss. This thing sent shockwaves through the fandom. I only thought was, these hoes stealing everything from Empire. Last week, they stole plot points. Now you steal the incest kiss. Come up with your own shit. They pussied out, too. They can't even go all the way. Peak incest. Seriously, now, people have issues with this. Like, I have a whole list of far more egregious shit. Slights against Tolkien's work and legacy. This is where you draw the 
line. The funny thing is the writers didn't even need to do this. They did it for this very response and a half-assed attempt to help this show's falling ratings. Adar's whole plan is stupid. I mean, he thinks the whole city is falling to darkness, which it, by our view is about 50 people. You got Merdania just lollygagging on the damn wall without armor, half-assed arrows flying through the air. Why are there still people running around? Like, don't the average citizen have somewhere to go for this very scenario? What the hell is this defense? Seriously. But anyway, put a pin in that. Adar meets with Elrond, and instead of holding off and coming up with a plan to capture Sauron, these dumb shits start fighting each other. What the hell are we doing? The writers have come up with this scenario with this show-invented character, Adar, and he needs to kill him at all costs. Even though they haven't done a great job of building up that history, Adar thinks he needs the ring and a crown to do it. So everyone is fighting everyone for a contrived reason. What did I say about dumbing characters down to make the plot happen? Here we go again. I thought Adar wanted in the city. Now he's fighting the man who can get him in. Like seriously, okay, Elrond arrives. He wants the ring. That now Adar is fighting him for the ring because he thinks it's the only way he can kill Sauron. What the fuck have you been doing this whole time? Elrond's only here because he came across you in the woods. You see how all this shit becomes a tangled mess? Like Elrond now is fighting Adar to defend the city run by Sauron. And don't forget Arendir trying to kill Adar until Gladriel has a moment to urge patience, but whatever welcome to this train wreck of clusterfuck that is rings of power but hey i'm happy if you enjoy it good for you i just don't know how you do it baby and can, <laughs> can we talk about these guards i say again these bitches are dangerous for your health Celebrimbor finishes the rings and escapes by cutting off his damn thumb takes the rings with him you should be terrified <laughs> They try to bring him back in again. Gladriel luckily stops him and Celebrimbor gives her the rings to run. Celebrimbor is going to face Sauron for some reason, I don't know. And it is not strength that overcomes darkness, but light. Uh, yeah, that's great and all, but you need strength to protect the light. I don't think you thought this whole thing through. And here we go, baby. I feel pride just thinking about it. What a man, what a warrior. Oh, I'm still not convinced he made them do that. These guards are stupid enough. They might have just slipped. You never know. It would make about as much sense as the rest of this series. What now, Celebrimbor? The only thing you've done is give Sauron a hostage. And here we are. Right back where we started at the beginning of the episode. Outside, the battle rages. It's pure chaos. We get this stunning moment. My, my, look how strong you are. No, what about what about inclusion force? We need an Asian. Oh, oh, we have another. Okay, okay, we're good then. The battle winds down as the sun rises. Elrond gets blue balled because he realizes Durin isn't coming. Durin will come. Durin will come. Ooh, I get you're a pleaser and all, but damn, man, calm down. It all goes downhill. The walls are finally breached. Erendir gets stabbed by Adar, and Adar takes the ring from Elrond. The cliffhanger ensues. I will give him props, man. That damn troll did look good, so hey, that's one positive. But overall, man, I tried. Listen, I tried to enjoy this episode. I tried to do what people always say, man. Enjoy it for what it is. And, and man, 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 I'm sorry. I just don't enjoy vacuous characters making irrational decisions to force hasty plot points together for some muddled battle. This is what happens when you have too many plot threads. I applaud them for trying to bring some of them together, but with all the weaving, dipping, and dodging, this episode does in and out of plot threads, motivations, objectives. What we are left with is this labyrinth of stupidity. They decided just to throw it all in a pile this episode for a giant culmination of ineptitude. I mean, in Helm's Deep, everything was clear. Aragorn's side needed to survive till daylight. The Orakai wanted to get in. It's simple. You're able to perfect your pacing that way, build tension. This Rings of Power battle is closer to the Battle of the Blackwater, though, because of the number of threads involved. And in the Blackwater, you had great characters you liked on both sides. Stannis needed to get into the city. Tyrion needed to survive long enough for Tywin's army to arrive. And he wasn't even sure if they were ever coming, so he just needed to survive, period. Like Davos and Stannis, Cersei, Sansa with Tyrion. The battle changes, tactics change, courage builds and fades. There's a give and a take to choreographing a siege. All this makes you ask the question, why? 
why. Tolkien's version of events, what actually happened, is so much more interesting. The problem is it was always going to be messy because this show's version of events from making the rings out of order to the entire sequence of events in season one. All that damn mystery box storytelling. Episode one should have started with Anatar showing up and all the intrigue and confrontation his arrival and presence bring. It should have been the main focus of the series. They could have slowly built up more side plots like Kaz of Doom and Numenor. Stop myself. I don't even know why I'm reflecting on Roads Not Travel because it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, we see what they did to Numenor and the Dwarves. Even if the events were in order like the books, they would have still messed it up. I mean, we got show characters like Adar filling in and taking Sauron's agency away so the writers can play who's sucking who in season one. Instead of Sauron gathering his forces and sacking the city hunting for the rings, we get we would have got Celebrimbor's last stand and then, okay, okay, I gotta stop. I have to stop. We are where we are, man. And that's all it is to it. And, but shit, man, what else can we do but laugh at it? Said my piece. Thanks for watching.